126, 2013. It's a nice morning, Saturday morning. Here we are gathered with the S&P 500. We're right back up here where the we finally made it here on this monthly chart. We slightly got up above that 1500 level that I talked about in other analysis. And the bull is in play. And here's the thing. The worldwide monetary policy called Federal Reserves have flooded the system with money. And the bond bubble is about to burst. And then that's why they have to come back and put the risk on into the equity side. What we've done here on a monthly level is just that we're overbought and like any other times. If this year, this month is going to set the tone for the year for the new bull run, we will have corrections that will happen. So right here, we're right back up here at the 2007 tops where the financial crisis started up here, you know, above 1550 area. And we're at that 1502.96. That's on a monthly. When you look at the daily and you go back over to the tops, you can see right here how we have just climbed that wall of worry. What people really need to understand, there's a lot of money on the sideline. And unlike in, in, in 2012, that money never did find its way back into the marketplace. So basically with the Federal Reserve with QE3 and you have worldwide uh, bankers uh, flooding the system print with the printing presses are running strong that is pulling money into the equity side which is good for the equity side bull. IRAs have gone higher but once again everyone we've ran too far too quickly and there's gonna have to be some pullbacks. In the S&P 500 we're going to be focusing on this area of the daily chart. And like I said, 1520 is going to be right here. And once we get up here, this is where the 2007 went down. That's going to be the next major catalyst if we can get it up here on this daily bar that started back on 12-11-2007. So 15-10 is going to come into play on the S&P and then up at the top of the crown will be 15-20. This is where it was at 15-68. We have upper ends up here right below the 15-50 that I've talked about for a lot of calendar years. And we have finally made it to this area so the broader part of the market the bull is going to be waiting for a pullback to get in and short term we're at the top of the ceiling of the range and there's going to be a pullback which would give people an opportunity to engage in the market because this market is set up to break its long-term bear and it's nice to see that but once again we're overbought and there will be pullbacks that means that equities are going to reporting in the S&P 500 earnings this next week we'll have at least 100 S&P 500 companies coming out with their broader perspective and the economic data in the economy has turned you have the housing and the financials working. We have a lot of catalysts in, in the markets that are working. Uh, worldwide markets such as Europe and the rest of the world around the world, they've done well and they're coming out of their, their doom and gloom processes as well. So the thing about it is we still have a lot of things that are going to happen. There will be a correction. I didn't say it had to be next week or, uh, or anything like that. However, we have to back in fill and come down in any bull run. Bull rallies have to come back and test support levels. So on the daily level of calendar 2013, it's a very clear shot right up here to the highs. Um, the upper end when we hit those resistance levels is going to have some challenges for the broader market. 
I will tell people to sell into the rally and buy on the dips. There's lots of catalysts working for these markets. Once again, it would be nice if the bull could stay here permanently instead of going into bears like they always have done since the financial crisis. We always make these great highs and then we pull back and then there's always something happening in the government or, or lots of different things. It is a 100% bull move. And it's good because that way lots of people that have sat on the sideline uh, have to deploy capital. And the Federal Reserve is forcing those people that money will come out of that bond bubble. And once again, that was always the agenda of what these stimuluses are for. And the QE3 is to put risk on. And even the bull is, is, is saying, hey, we need a pullback. So we'll be watching exactly what happens in this, this next following week. We'll have lots of earnings in the S&P 500 coming out. Last week, we had a bulk of the earnings like Google, like ISRG, like Apple come out. And, you know, they had guided down. We had weakness in our economy. And the economy is trying to show a sound footing. The problem is you can't believe everything you hear. A stock picker's market, one by one. And as we go up, we're, 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 we're going to hit these resistance levels on the S&P, and we're overbought. I will tell people to sell into it, but once again, that money that's on that sideline is going to have to make a home. And every bull run has pullbacks, and we have gone over, and we've called every one of them. We're in this case again now. So it's good to start January out this way. There will be some challenges, though, that people need to be aware of. And your awareness is that in the shorter term, it's going to, it's going to be harder to get the market higher because markets have to have pullbacks and new capital have to be deployed into the equity side. And it will come into equities because they're not going to make money in bonds. And not only that, the printing presses are printing around the world. Massive liquidity is in play. There is every catalyst that you would want to have happen to support stocks. And that the little investor, little day traders and whatnot, that they would find a home and they would come back into the marketplace. But every time that people start to buy up at these highs, we get pullbacks, and pullbacks will be viable unless there's some kind of major event like North Korea wanting to point missiles to the U.S. However, I'm just giving the update, and it's a great thing to see that people can return to the market because they're not going to make money in other areas, meaning that risk on comes back into play. So, therefore, dips are going to be viable, and therefore, we have a complete bull that is back in play. And it's been a number of years to get back here. We haven't been back here to these levels since 2007. And that's when the financial crisis started. We were there. We called the tops, and these are these tops right over here. And this is that calendar part of the year. So these are going to be the resistance levels that the market is going to have to face and the challenges moving forward. And every market, every bull run has to have a pullback, and that's where you want to buy the dips. So S&P 500 is probably one of the best Januaries in a number of years. Again, we started off last January kind of this, the same way. Um... However, there were lots of challenges and we had some pretty good size corrections and 2013 will be the same way. And the thing about it is, as people get to feel better, we see where U.S. corporations start to spend money and that there's going to be a lot of M&A activity, mergers and acquisitions this year. And not only that, the uh, uncertainty is coming off the table 
and all of the issues that were there are now at rest and we continue to go higher uh, sell into the rallies up here at the resistance level and buy the dips and it's a stock pickers market